Dear students, today let's discuss about human rights movement during Indian freedom struggle. In the introductory parts, Indian leaders and the founding fathers of the Indian constitution had developed many provisions with a view to protect human rights in Indian soil, which is the most subsequent outcome of freedom struggle against colonial rule of British. Human rights are generally defined as those rights which are inherent in our nature and without which we cannot live as human beings. There is only one innate right, namely freedom. In so far, it can coexist with the freedom of every other in accordance with the universal law. It is the only original rights belonging to every man by virtue of his humanity. Thus, human rights are claims and the conditions without which no one can have a dignified life. Human rights are fundamental freedoms are the birth rights of all human beings. With this core concept, our forefathers fought for freedom. Indeed, human rights are product of history in one sense, that natural rights are associated as inborn quality even before society or state emerge. In order to understand human rights movement in India, one needs to look at the state of human rights during ancient India. We can broadly discuss the context of Indian freedom struggle from human rights perspective. The first one, the foundation of human rights in ancient India. Second, human rights cause in the Indian freedom struggle. Third one, human rights during colonial period in India. And the fourth one, significant impact of freedom movement on human rights. The first one, foundation of human rights in ancient India. The ancient Indian legal philosophers were universalists, humanists, rationalists, and above all, moralists, who evolved a system of legal theory, which was based on higher values and ideals. The quest for equality and justice inspired the ancient Indian minds more than their counterparts, the Greeks and the Romans. For instance, the philosophy of dharma, righteousness, is a foundation of human rights. Every aspect of life was regulated by dharma, the supreme law in ancient India. Theology presents the basis for human rights philosophy. The ancient Indian philosophers made effort to define human rights as those rights which were inherent in our nature and without which we could not live as human beings. They believed that since the right flow from the divine source, they are inalienable by moral authority. There are many references in Vedas which throw light on the existence of human rights. It is no wrong to state that Human rights are universal and applicable to all without any discrimination. Struggling for human rights in India too had been influenced by great Indian philosophy and is still an impressive one. For instance, the founding fathers had also been impressed by various movements that appeared in advanced Western and European states and uh, incorporated them in the Indian constitution.
Human Rights Movement During Freedom Struggle Generally, it is believed that consciousness for human rights were very little in the colonial period except among few educated leaders. Struggle against British colonialism was based on principles seeking civil liberties for the individual and uh, this became the very philosophy of human rights. Throughout the period of independent movement, various demands that were associated with human rights and fundamental freedoms were the main influencing factors. In general, freedom is one of the pivotal factors that such freedom struggle was exploded when there was intolerability of exploitations and the violations of rights by the colonial powers. Exploitations of Indian resources by British colonial rule led to invite mass movement against the colonial rule for protecting rights. It is also true that the concept for the protection of human rights was embedded by the conditions and the appearances. Spread of Western education and the cultures made the Indians well aware of their due rights in terms of liberty, equality and fraternity. Various demands put up during this movement initiated with basic rights like equal opportunity for employment, introduced land reforms and uh, remove zamindari operations, protect civil liberties. Let us now discuss human rights movement on the line of historical antecedents. For this, it is necessary to make a briefing on the state of human rights and the British attitude towards Indian human rights conditions during 1757 to 1858, 1858 to 1919 and uh, during Gandhi's period 1920 to 1947 etc. Within this paradigm, let's see the first one state of human rights and the British attitude towards Indians. The entire system of the country was oriented to the niche of British imperialism. Lord Macaulay rejected the ancient Indian legal and uh, political system as dot ages of Brahmanical superstition. They looked down upon Indian values, myths and uh, demeaning thought. Indeed, discriminations were in every sector. Indians were deprived of their political, social and economic rights. Execution of arbitrary acts on the whims of imperialist attitudes on the one hand indicates that law for the ruler and on the other for the rule. It is not wrong to observe that Indians were reduced to states of slaves. The next one, the first half of British colonialism 1757 to 1858. Great Indian leaders were unhappy to see the various policies to exploit natural resources when British colonialism commenced after the Battle of Plassey. Manual labor was empty-handed and uh, craftsmen were destroyed by the influx of the British manufactured goods. In this context, Raja Raman Roy was the first leader who drew attention of his countrymen regarding the British policies that systematically exploited natural resources of India and eventually violate rights. Mass uprising in the context of human rights 
during the freedom struggle in India was the first war of independence, that is Sepoy Mutiny, 1857. The revolt of 1857 was the result of long discontent against British suppressive policies, though its immediate cause was provided by the Indian soldiers. It was the result of the culmination of popular discontent that had been building up for a long time against different policies pursued by the British in India. The next one, the second half of British colonialism, 1858 to 1919. When the British ruled India, resistance to foreign rule was manifested in the form of demand for fundamental freedoms and the civil and the political rights for the people. From the beginning, the politically conscious Indians had been powerfully attracted to modern civil rights, namely the freedom of speech, freedom of expression, freedom of thought and association. Consequently, they put up a strong defense of these civil rights whenever the government tried to curtail them. Under the British rule, human rights and the justice delivery system was totally demeaned. So, the British period in India is object as that is in Indian history. The first explicit demand for fundamental rights appeared in the Constitution of India Bill 1895. The bill invites basic freedoms like expression, equality, liberty, etc. The rise of militant extremism in the early 20th century was also for human rights cause because they were not satisfied about modus operandi of the moderate groups. By 1905, the extremist militant movement replaced the Congress strategy of constitutionalism by Swadeshi and the boycott. Extremist leaders like Lala Lajpat Rai, Bal Gangara Tilak, Bipin Chandrapal, Arvind Ghosh had never believed in the British rule in India, nor did they have any faith in British system of justice. Since then, Swaraj and uh, Sodesi became a great weapon to fight for right. Tilak's slogan, Swaraj is my bad right, was very encouraging to the followers. The various resolutions adopted during 1917 to 1919 reiterated the demand for civil rights and uh, equal status, equal opportunity for employment, equality before law, free press and uh, freedom of expression. The next, during Gandhi's period, 1920 to 1947. Gandhi condemned British rule over India as a satanic, adhamic. He expounded the theory of peaceful resistance, that is Satyagraha, to fight the British laws, to have a meaningful life, liberty, and national independence. The right to life, liberty, and happiness as inalienable rights aroused the spirit of self-respect, nationalism, and patriotism in the hearts of Indians. Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose also emerged on the scene and advocated the adoption of complete independence as the goal of the freedom movement so as to protect human rights of Indians. Motilal Nehru Report 1928 declared that 
the first concern of the people of India was to secure fundamental rights. During freedom struggle, human rights were reflected in numerous resolutions. The resolution of fundamental rights and economic program as adopted in the Karachi session of the Congress 1931 was remarkable. Elements of basic fundamental rights were also included that like freedom of conscience, right to freely profess and practice his religion, equality before law irrespective of caste, creed or sex, equal opportunity for public employment, freedom of profession and occupation were also included. The Constitution of India enacted in 1950 incorporated 10 of the 19 rights enumerated in the Motilal Nehru Committee Report 1928. At the time when Government of India Act 1935 was on the anvil, it was proposed that fundamental rights were to be added in the Constitution, but it was passed without any Bill of Rights. Taking the significance of fundamental rights, the Sapru Committee in 1945 stressed on the need for written court. Besides, Constituent Assembly attempted for inclusion of human rights in the Constitution. As such, fundamental rights and the directive principles of state policy were included in the Constitution of India 1950 under Part 3 and 4, which were the basic human rights for the people of India. So, let's see what we find in the conclusion. Freedom movement or any kind of movement is intrinsically related with rights, preferably the context of human rights in the real sense. It was also witnessed that such movement germinated only when the capacity of tolerability is out of limit. All members of human family must be treated as equal, equality being human rights. The rich Indian culture and the religious dogma respects human dignity since long back. However, with the coming of British rule in India, violations of Human rights were started since many years back and uh, more comprehensively shown Bokil during freedom movement when British India government systematically denied human rights. Thank you.